Our news feature this Friday evening is the Cultural Agenda, and this is where we allow a stakeholder in the culture industry to speak on a related topic of importance. And this week we welcome travel journalist Diana Ogilvie, who will speak on more tourist opportunities in Kingston. Diana, good evening. Good evening. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining having us. me. <laughs> Happy to be here. So tell us all about these opportunities in Kingston. Well, since Kingston has been designated a UNESCO music city, creative city, okay. I feel like there should be more um, efforts put into that um, into that that genre uh, I mean we're just um, well we're about to come up on reggae month mm -hmm. in February and I feel like last year there wasn't as much gusto because I'm so excited you know hear my accent I'm Jamaican I'm a returning resident I've mm -hmm. been back for about two years I've lived in Indonesia traveled the world and I come back home and one of the things that I find lacking is there's not a central website or a spot for me to go and say okay what's happening this weekend okay what's this what's the coolest bar that i can check out in kingston yes. what about food crawls and especially with the rise of airbnb in jamaica and it's an interesting fact that the most rented neighborhood on airbnb is trench town yeah, yeah. Blew my mind when I <laughs> read that fact. But it just goes to show that people are looking for a really authentic grassroots experience. You know, it's fine to have the, um, you know, the coastal experience, yeah. the sun, the sand, and the sea, but people are actually coming to Kingston for the music, for the food, and gastronomy is part of the tourism board's push. And we definitely could be doing a little bit more in terms of providing information for visitors to come in, um, for people to have a long-term experience instead of, you know, just coming in and stamping the passport. Just in your experience, you said you're in Indonesia. Yes. And I guess you've traveled all over. But in terms of cities that have provided this type of information or um, been very good at um, you know hosting these types of experiences you, do you know a little bit about the structure that would have been in place is this done by the city government is it done by private interests? yes it's definitely done by the city government I think my last trip before I left Asia I did a a self-curated press trip. Okay. So as a writer, I contacted the tourism board of Hong Kong, and I immediately the response, I got a response in a, within a few days, and I said, these are the things that I'm interested in covering in your city. And I was provided access. So I went on a cruise to Taiwan. I was able to go on a food tour of central Hong Kong, um, took the, uh, the, the escalators up, and it was really, and I did that by myself. So. There, is, there was something in place. I, I went to the website and I said, okay, well, there's some street artists appearing tomorrow. Um, and also I went during the time of Art Basel. So that was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. So there definitely was a central website that I was able to go to and tell the tourism board, okay, these are things that I'm interested in covering for my article. Nana, if you were advising the Ministry of Tourism, or better yet, the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. Help. What advice would you give with regard to the development of Kingston? Well, I would say, first of all, we would definitely need to have a website that is mobile friendly. <laughs> we need uh, to inject more technology within our tourism and focus on these grassroots experience. Why don't we can do uh, someone do a, a, a Red Hills Road food crawl? There's so many places on, on Red Hills Road that you can go. There's a soup man here, there's a jerk man there, there's a pan chicken man there. And the crab and corn people, you know, down by Hero's Circle, there's so many wonderful nuggets that can be packaged. Um, I was on Airbnb Experiences the other day, and someone was marketing just having an afternoon with a local, yeah. and that cost 12 US dollars. What I'm hearing in what you're saying is a moving away from the traditional type of tourism or maybe even the traditional type of tourist where other destinations, even a small market like Jamaica, are become important. So the city itself should be marketed as a des destination as cities, I guess, worldwide have been marketed. Absolutely, That's exactly what but I'm saying. But aren't we being marketed by the Jamaica Tourist Board? Is that not adequate? Have you been on the tourism website well, lately? Tell, tell us about it. Okay. <laughs> well, they have, first of all, their website is, um, it's, 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 it's packed with information. So the information isn't as streamlined as I would want it to be. And they have um, the calendar of events. It's mostly of annual events. So if you, let's say, have, as a local, I would like to put my 
event up on, on the tourism board is not readily available as opposed to, I don't know, Rebel Salute is coming up in these big ticket, big ticket items. So it's very broad, an umbrella, and what I'm talking about is more of a targeted, laser niche focus. Well, I was about to say this sounds like a great little niche. So mm. why aren't you doing it? I am doing it. I have a blog. <laughs> <laughs> my blog is eatpraystayfordays.com. My specialty is local travel. So I lived in Florida. I wrote about Florida. I lived in Indonesia. I wrote about all the islands I visited. I live in Kingston. I write about Kingston. So, but, I mean, you're a Jamaican. Yes. Um, and you're going to be biased. But tell us a little bit about how Kingston would compare as a destination experience for the type of tourism you're describing as compared to other cities that you've been to. Uh, I think for, for Kingston, yes, I am biased, but let me put on my journalism goggles. Um, for Kingston, it will definitely be a wholesome experience in terms of people seeking music, food, and again, I keep saying that, with that word, this word, grassroots, mm -hmm. grassroots culture. Um, people will go to Hong Kong to take the ferry for, you know, for good dim sum, for the lights. People will go to London for the London Eye. I mean, when I go to London, I have a more of a Jamaican experience in London <laughs> than I do here in Kingston because, you know, the population there, the, the, right. the diaspora. So people need more, people will have more of a targeted grassroots experience here in Kingston. And, uh, you know, trench down because of, you know, the Bob Marley influence is the most rented place on Airbnb. So that should really go to, that, that should really sh push the powers that be to design, to design something that will have people come here and stay here for longer. I mean, the sun, sand, and sea, we have yes, that. Okay. That's great. That's for a different kind of traveler. What I'm talking about is more urban people who are interested in the culture, who would go and they would sit on the roadside and they'll eat a piece of chicken and they'll, you know, boom somebody and, you know, maybe take a cart ride, who'll go down to Coronation Market. Right. That's the kind Diana, of traveler. Before we wrap, yes. if you were to come up with a tagline for the city of Kingston, what would it be? Mm. A tagline for Kingston. Wow, you put me on the spot there. I think the tagline for Kingston for me would be Vibrance. Okay. Yeah. Exclamation mark. Yeah, vibrance. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good one. Thank you. Social media is on the other side of this break. <laughs>